Good morning, my dear students of uh, class 10. So, since we have finished the mole concept chapter, we have been solving previous year size equations. So, today we will be solving the questions that had come in the year 2018, ICC 2018. So, please, uh, first of all, look at the questions I have written for you all. Since it's not there in your textbook, you need to copy these questions first. So, after completing copying these questions we will be solving these questions one by one so please copy these questions first so let's start solving the question number one a first okay so in order to do that i have to leave this question this part another question So, look here in the question number one here, the percentage composition of a gas, nitrogen and hydrogen is given and they are asking you to calculate the empirical formula. So, I have written EF, it means empirical formula of the gas. So, since you know to solve this particular question, you need to make a table first. So, let's make the table in order to solve this particular question. So, table comprises of different columns. In the first column, we have elements. After that, percentage composition. Percentage composition. Then, you will be having atomic masses or atomic non atomic mass. After that, we have atomic residue. Atomic residue. Then at last we have simple rest. So this five columns has to be made first. So you have first elements, then percentage composition, atomic weight or atomic mass, then you have relative number of moles or atomic residue, and then at last you have simple residue. So the elements that are given in this particular question are question A is nitrogen and hydrogen. So nitrogen and hydrogen we have given. Percentage composition of these elements are given. This is 82.35 percentage and for hydrogen it is 17.64 percentage. Atomic mass of nitrogen is 14 which will be given in the question and for hydrogen it is 1. Now in atomic ratio what you have to do is you have to remember this very it has to be very clear okay you should not be confused. In this particular column, atomic ratio, the percentage composition of that particular element will be divided by its atomic mass. So, here you will be having 82.35 by 40. Similarly, here for hydrogen, the composition is written as in the numerator divided by its atomic mass. So, once you divide these two, here you can this is simple division. You can do it by yourself and after division the, the answer that you get here is 5.88 so you need to take two digits okay at least after the decimal so 5.88 you have the ratio atomic ratio as 5.88 <coughs> similarly here you will be having atomic ratio as 17.64 so this atomic ratio is there now in the simple ratio part, in order to get a simple whole number, what you have to do is, we have to divide uh, the respective, here you will be getting 5.88 and here you got 17.64. Now here in this simple ratio part, in order to get a simple ratio, what you have to do is, you have to divide whatever atomic ratio you get for that particular element, Okay, by the smallest among these elements present. Here you have two elements, two elements here nitrogen and hydrogen, and the atomic ratio here are 5.88 and 17.64. Out of these two, 5.88 is smaller number, therefore it has to be divided by 
5.88. Similarly here also 17.64. Whatever is written, whatever is present in the atomic question, it is written as numerator and it is has to be divided by the smallest value that you get in, in atomic ratio that is 5.88. So if you divide this we get one and after division so okay, you can divide it we will be getting here as three. So from this particular simple whole number here we have a simple whole number whole numbers one and three this one corresponds to nitrogen that means the number of element, the number of atoms present in this particular compound is 1 and for hydrogen it is 3. So N1 has 3 and uh, what I think is empirical formula. 1 can be omitted so you will be getting your empirical formula equals to NS3. Okay, so this portion is solved. You just have to remember this portion is very simple. Simple division is required and you need to re remember the columns in which column what you have to write okay hope this is clear now let's move on to the next question this ns3 is an empirical formula In the second question, please uh, refer to the question that I have copied. The second question deals with the uh, aluminium carbide. So this is let me write this question. Aluminium carbide Al four C three reacting with two molecules of water. Two as two will give you four mol moles of Aluminium hydroxide, whole twice plus three moles of methane. Three moles of methane. So, what the question has asked us now? See, so the first question is uh, has asked us what mass of aluminium hydroxide is formed from 12 gram of aluminium carbide. Okay, and uh, for this, you need to calculate. The RMM in the question itself, the RMM is given. Okay, the question in the question itself, the RMM is given. Relative molecular weight of aluminium carbide equals to 144. So they have given you RMM of this aluminium carbide that is 144, and uh, they have also given you the relative molecular mass of aluminium hydroxide, which is which 17. Okay. So 144 is for one more and this 78 is also for one more long. So what the question has asked us, what mass of aluminium hydroxide is formed from 12 gram of aluminium carbide? So they have made it very clear, okay? They are asking, they are, the question relates between which two compounds, aluminium carbide and aluminium hydroxide. And RMM is given. Even if it's not given, you know how to calculate it. Okay? I already taught you. Now, the question is relating aluminium hydroxide with aluminium carbide. Now, you have to be very careful here in calculating this particular, particular, this what amount of aluminium hydroxide is going to be formed. So, they have given the RMM. This RMM stands for only one more. And in this question, you can see that aluminium, whenever one mole of aluminium carbide reacts, it forms how many moles? Four moles. And this value is for only one mole. So this needs to be multiplied with four. Okay? So if you multiply 78 with four, so you get, what is it? 32, 3, 4, 70, 28, 31. So you get this will be equal to 312. So it means that when 144 gram of aluminium carbide reacts, it produces 312, 312 gram of aluminium hydroxide. So, and in the next 
what they have given? They have given calculate the mass of aluminum hydroxide. So they are asking you to calculate this x and they have given the mass of aluminum carbide as 12 grams. So out of 4, out of 4, 3 are so you can easily calculate x. Okay? So let's calculate this. 144 gram of aluminium carbide produces from this ratio 144 is giving you 312 gram. So one gram of aluminium carbide will produce obviously less than this. So if it's less than this, it has to be divided by 144. And for how much they have asked? They have asked for 12 gram. So 12 gram of aluminium carbide produces, so let me write it here, 312 divided by 144 into 12. So if you calculate this one, 12 1 12, 12 12 to 144. So 2 6 are 12, 2 1 2, 2 5 are 10. 2 times 10, 2 6 is 12. So 3, 2 7 is 14, 2 8 is 16. So here now this can be divided by 3, 3 1 is 3, 3 2 is 6, 3 6 is 3 6 is 18. So you get it as 26 grams. So this is a very simple calculation. The most important part is here. You have to read it. You have to know from the equation, given equation, which two are related, and uh, you have to take whatever is given, like 1, 144, and here 70 was given, but you have to look at the balanced equation. 4 more, 1 is producing 4, so it has to be multiplied with 4. So you got 312, and they are asking for 12 gram. So once you get 3 information, the 4 can be easily calculated by using simple unitary method. So the answer that you obtain is. 26 gram. That means whenever you have 12 gram of aluminium carbide reacting, then the amount of aluminium hydroxide that is produced is 26 gram. Okay. Now let's move on to the next question. The next question. So here they have asked you what volume of methane will be produced from 12 gram of aluminium carbide. So this is also very simple. Here what is related? Aluminium carbide and methane. You have to check whatever mole is given. CH4, 3 mole. So here this side is volume and this side it is gram. Okay? So they are asking you volume this side. Here for methane, and they, are, they have given you the information of gram molecular mass. So, GFM, you already know it, 144 gram. Now, this will one mole of any gas at STP occupies 22.4 liters. You already know it. One mole of any gas at STP occupies 22.4 liters. One mole. Remember, one mole. But in this particular equation, you can see there are three moles. So you have to always multiply with the number of moles. That means when you know 144 gram of aluminium carbide is consumed, 3 into 3 into 22.4 liters of methane will be produced. And for what amount they have asked? They have asked for 12 grams. What is the volume of methane produced? Now once you write all the information given correctly, this is very simple to solve. Okay. Now, here you can see that. Let me write this particular relation in sentences. So, 144 gram of 
This is aluminum armor EL four C three produces. 3 into 22.4 liters of methane of methane CS4 so 1 gram of air aluminum carbide will produce obviously less than this so therefore it has to be divided by whatever amount is given that is 144 and for how much they have asked? they have asked for 12 gram so 2 gram of aluminum carbide produces 3 into 22.4 divided by 144 into 12. So 12 over 12, 12, 12, 144, 3 over 3, 3 3 over 12. So if you divide 22.4 with 4, 4, 5, 20. So 2 has been, 1 will be seated here. So this 4 will be done over here. 4, 6, 20. So after calculating, you saw that you got 5.6. You can see 5.6. So 5.6 liters of methane will be produced. So this is very simple question. The most important part is writing the given information correctly. The three information is known, the fourth you have to calculate it. Okay? Hope this is clear. Now let's move on to the next question that happened in the year 2018. The next question that had come in the year 2018 is if 150 cc, please refer to the question that you have copied, okay? If 150 cc of gas A contains X molecules, so this is C1, they are saying that 150 cc of gas A is containing how many molecules? X molecules. Yes or no? And if 150 cc of gas A is containing X molecules, then you know about Avogadro's law. Avogadro's law tells us what? Equal volume of all the gases. All the gases. Equal volume. Please listen to this word very carefully. Equal volume of all the gases. Okay? Contains the same number of molecules under similar conditions, under the similar conditions of temperature and pressure. So they have given you two gases here. That is gas A and gas B. If 150 cc of A contains X molecules, then obviously from Avogadro's law, 150 cc of gas B should also contain X molecules. This is from Avogadro's law. All gases equal volume. Equal volume. Very important word. Equal volume. Of all the gases at STP, there is the same number of molecules. If they have taken 150 cc of gas A, X molecules it contains. If you take the same volume, see 150, 150, they are same equal volume. That, that means equal volume of any gas will contain the same number of molecules, that is X molecules. Okay? And the question has asked us what is the amount of what is the amount of what is the number of molecules in 75 cc of gas B? Yes or no? So what is the amount, what is the number of molecules? So this is very simple now. If 150 cc, 150 cc of gas B is containing how many? X number of molecules. X molecules. Then 1 cc, 1 cc of gas B 
will contain less than less than this. That means x divided by 150 molecules. And for how much they have asked? They have asked for 75 cc. Of gas B should contain x by 150 into 75. So if you divide it, you get it to be x by 2. Okay? So the number of molecules that is contained, that is contained in 75 cc of B, gas B, is x by 2. And uh, this is from calculation. Now, from simple, if you just apply your common sense, then you should be able to tell it. See, if 150 cc of gas B is written in X molecules, X number of molecules, 75 is what? 75 is half of 150 cc. Yes or no? The half, if the volume is decreased to half, the number of molecules will also decrease to half. That is, X was there in 150. In 75, which is the half of 150, it should contain x by 2, that is half of the number of molecules present in 150 cc. Hope this is clear. Now keep on practicing previous year's ICC questions. If you have any problem, you can always ask me.